Well, I would say first and foremost would be water and sanitation because that's very basic. We have about 60% of our urban population which is covered by piped water network where water is brought from a treated source. And typically people living in urban areas get water anywhere from say as low as two hours every third day to about six hours daily. And there are very, very few cities where you have continuous water supply from a pipe network 24-7. So water is a huge problem. It is underpriced in urban areas. And also we do a very poor job of treating our wastewater, an area in which Singapore has really done an extremely good job. So what we need is an integrated uh, water management system. I think it's beginning to be recognized that this should be a top priority in urban areas. And there are some cities which are trying to do that. But um, water, wastewater treatment, stormwater drains, you know, sewerage network, all of that really, I would say, is number one problem for Indian cities and towns. Number two, I would say, will be integrated land use and transport planning. Our cities do very poorly in mobility. Uh, public transport is available only in about 500 or so cities out of a total of 8,000 cities. So we need to have public transport of good quality available at affordable prices. But at the same time, we also need to plan our land use with transportation in a manner that we can minimize the need for people to move from uh, home to workplace, for example. Density in our cities has not been planned properly. We need to do FSI planning. So we have transit oriented, you know, planning of land use where FSI, the floor space index is higher in transport corridors. So all that kind of work, I think we need much more of it than we have. Finally, the third challenge I would say is that India, as you know, is growing very rapidly and we are in a stage of structural transformation where cities are going to play a very important role and increasingly more important role. So we need metropolitan planning. We need metropolitan connectivity. We need to connect our big cities with our middle cities, middle cities with small cities and even small cities and towns with rural areas. We need to create agglomerations and hubs where around one major city you have a whole lot of other cities that are connected. So connectivity in a metropolitan context, I would say, would be the third challenge facing urbanization in India. One area in which Indian cities are doing very well is the application of IT. They are using new technology to leapfrog and find solutions to challenges which seem larger than life size. One of these would be uh, grievance redressal for service delivery in cities and towns. For example, um, you, your street light is not working. And how can you have a system where you send the message and you get a reply saying it will be done in X number of hours and if it's not done, such and such officer is accountable. So this is what we call e-governance and a number of cities are going in for e-governance for the delivery of services where uh, it's not just that they receive the complaint through um, uh, internet or online or SMS uh, or, or, or those ways, but that they, there is back-end integration so that the business processes are being changed, they are re-engineered so that the, uh, there is coordination and ability to respond to this complaint. The complaint gets there fast, there is again uh, internet allowing them to respond to it faster and then get back to them. So that's one area. 
again new technology like GIS is being used in Indian cities for, uh, uh, for example, for um, catching power theft. In Delhi, there is an electricity supply company which has really brought down the uh, power distribution losses by using GIS to see, you know, where the power bills uh, where power is being used and uh, uh, then detecting why it is not being paid for. Same way uh, uh, the municipal corporations or municipalities are using um, GIS to uh, uh, detect non-revenue water, uh, that if, where the water is being paid for, where leakages are, where distribution network needs to be fixed. Um, and GPS and GPRS, uh, you know, which you just assume in, in your buses and, you know, uh, different systems here, are, is now being uh, used on municipal vehicles to track uh, uh, whether they are actually doing what they are supposed to be doing and they uh, um, end up saving on fuel. Uh, uh, and again in buses, public buses, GPS, GPRS is being used. I think this is a very fast growing area and India is at an advantage. You know Indian IT has helped uh, uh, the profit lines of uh, multinational corporations. So now Indian IT is being used to deliver services better in our own country. Uh, so I would say that would be my main uh, um, message uh, in terms of where in, in urban India you see a, a very new kind of uh, uh, way of dealing with public service delivery. Oh, I could do with learning everything. Huh? Singapore is, as they say, the mecca of urban development. If you want to learn about urban development, you have to come to Singapore. Because it is not only that, I think what is specially appealing to an Indian is that only 40, 50 years ago, the situation in your country, the state of service delivery, the state of housing uh, um, uh, was really, and even income levels were really not all that different. And uh, today, Yes, you are a first world country, but you've made this transition in a very short period. So we need to learn in every possible way. But what I would say is that there are two areas where I'm focusing more my attention, and that is wastewater treatment, because we really do need to fix our wastewater uh, if we want to address the challenge of water and sanitation in India. So that would be one second solid waste management, you know, what you have done. There is a lot of confusion today about uh, what is the best environment friendly way in which to manage waste. And the, as I understand, uh, after a lot of discussions here and what I have seen in India, it depends on the characteristics of your waste on the moisture content of your waste, on the caloric value of your waste, and whether you have lots and lots of land like the United States has to go in for landfills. But one thing is very clear, that while um, Singapore has gone for incineration, uh, and you know you don't have extra land to uh, uh, go uh, with scientific closure of landfills in, in large tracts of land, but even more important than what I have learned on technical uh, grounds uh, from Singapore, it is the holistic approach. It is the first to build awareness amongst the citizens that you have to uh, keep your city clean, uh, uh, develop a sense of hygiene, and then to talk of reducing waste, segregating wet waste from dry waste, recovering, recycling, doing all of that. And then what you have left, you incinerate that and then you use the ashes, you know, in the way you put it in an island and all. So it's, the, it's a complete uh, approach. And I think that is something which we need to really build into our consciousness. It's happening in some cities in India, even some small towns like Pammal, 
they talk about reduce, uh, recycle, recover, uh, and they're doing a great job of it. And in Pune, you know, we have these decentralized biomethanation plants because our waste has a high component of biodegradable element in it. So it is actually, it makes sense uh, uh, to go for biomethanation. Also because we have an agricultural base, the compost has a market. Uh, in India. So, you know, different cities will have to find different solutions, but Singapore really shows the way and how you should think about it and where the technology is. And finally, I would say not just uh, on solid waste or, or any individual areas, but one thing that I've learned here, which really uh, 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 appealed to me, is this uh, approach of whole government. Government thinks as a whole and there is no wrong door policy. So if you go with a complaint, uh, uh, if you as a citizen uh, uh, reach a certain department of the government and say this is my problem, the uh, government official cannot say to you, uh, go to another department, I don't handle this department. What he or she would have to say is, I will make sure that somebody from the right department will call you. Now, I think, you know, if we can do this one simple thing, we will really get the whole machinery to work much better. So that these are the kinds of little, little things that you can only learn when you visit uh, a city. You don't get it through websites or through books or uh, CDs. So I'm really very happy that uh, the Centre for Livable Cities has given me the opportunity to spend two weeks here as a fellow. I've interacted with all your technicians, your public officials, and uh, basically researchers working at CLC. And I take back uh, a great deal of learning from here.